CapCut is the best editing app for beginners and even the pros are switching over to it because it's so great for quick and easy edits. In this video, you're gonna get a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how I edit two different videos using the CapCut mobile app, so let's dive in. Okay, before we start editing, I do wanna point out that this is going to be a long video, something that you might wanna bookmark and come back to over time as you continue to grow as an editor. The first video that we edit is going to be a basic Instagram reel. I'm calling it a level one edit. If you're brand new to CapCut, brand new to editing in general, this is going to be great for you. And then after that, we're gonna crank up the heat a little bit and do a more advanced talking head Instagram reel. Here you'll learn how to recreate a lot of the popular trends that you're seeing online. The reason this video is a step-by-step -step tutorial is because unlike most editing videos on YouTube where they just show you the buttons and tell you what they do, I think that in order to truly learn, you need to watch someone do it and see the decision-making process as it plays out throughout the edit. And throughout this video, if you find the training style valuable, you definitely wanna check out our full online course, 14 Day Filmmaker. It has over 150 videos inside that teach you exactly how to master the process of shooting and editing on a smartphone. Over 120,000 people have gone through this course. It only costs $48 and the link to enroll is in the description. But without any further ado, let's dive into CapCut. So I'm actually gonna be editing on an iPad today. And the only reason I'm doing that is to make this easier on you. It's a larger screen. It's gonna make following along with the tutorial much easier. Outside of one very small thing, which I will touch on in the video when it occurs, there are no differences between iPads, iPhones, and Androids when it comes to CapCut. So we are in CapCut here, and I'm just gonna tap on new project. The first thing it's gonna ask you to do is select the footage that you actually want to edit. So I will select our footage by just tapping the little circle in the top right hand corner. If you wanted to, you could tap on the actual clip itself, at which point it will let you preview that clip, but I'm just gonna continue tapping on them. Keep in mind that CapCut is gonna import these in the order that you select them here. So if you're doing an edit where you want to go chronologically, select the clip that you want to be first in your video. You can always change the sequence later on in the edit, but again, I try to get ahead of things here. So I'll hit add now that we've got all of our clips selected and it's gonna open up our CapCut interface. Now really quick, I'm just gonna give you an overview of what everything you're seeing actually is. In the top left-hand corner, you could exit out of your project. Moving to the top right, this little dropdown is our project setting. So we could change our resolution, our frame rate, our code rate, and we could switch in and out of HDR. For the most part, you can leave this exactly as it is. CapCut will auto detect the best settings for your project. So you can come out of this. After that, this little button right here is the export video, which we'll do that at the end once we wanna save it to our phone. Moving down here, we have our player window. This is what's going to play the actual video that you're looking at. And if you wanted to, because this is a touchscreen device, if you select the clip on the timeline, you're actually able to pinch, zoom, and move around the clip in the frame with your fingers. Now, I don't wanna do that right now, so I'll come down here and hit the undo button just to go back to where we were before. But moving on, we have a button here to view in full screen if we wanted to see this take up the entire screen. We have our play button. We have a keyframe icon, which is a little bit of an advanced concept. We'll talk about that later. And then we have our undo and redo button. Moving on from there, we have the primary element of your edit, which is the video timeline. These are all of the clips that we imported earlier. And it just plays in a left to right fashion where whatever is underneath this line right here, which is called the playhead, is gonna show up on the player window. You can see if I hit play, it's just going to go through these clips one at a time, left to right on the timeline. Also on the timeline, we have a button here to mute all of the audio associated with these clips if you didn't want the audio to play through. And you also have a button to create a cover frame. This is basically the first frame of your video which you could use as the cover on Instagram, TikTok, anything like that. I'm just gonna leave this as is for now and hit X. Now we also have a little icon to add audio like music or sound effects, something like that down here. And then finally, we get to the bottom of our screen here which is our main menu. Now this main menu has a lot of functionality and it would take forever to walk through each individual button. It will become relevant as we go throughout this edit, but I want you to know that this menu will change depending on what you have selected. So if I select this clip right here, notice that the menu changed and now it's gone into the sub menu for when you have a clip selected. 
What this means is any of these icons right here, when you click on them, the change is going to be made to the clip that you have selected. There are going to be other sub menus that come up throughout this video for text, overlays, stickers, all these things. So keep in mind, this menu will change. And if you ever get lost, you just hit this back icon to go to the main menu. Now, one main menu item that I'll point out right now is this aspect ratio button right here. If you wanted to edit a horizontal video or a one by one video, you could click on aspect ratio and change from original, which is our vertical format here. You could change to one by one, 16 by nine. You could just see it's making the frame wider, at which point you would have to select your clips and zoom in to kind of fill that frame. I obviously wanna stay in the vertical format, so I'll just hit undo and go back. Now with all that out of the way, we've covered the interface. We can talk about our very basic editing controls. So on the timeline with our clips, we have them play one after another. Now, if you wanted to rearrange your sequence, you could hold your finger on a clip. That's going to give you a very easy way to drag it around and move it to wherever you want. Now let's say your clip is too long and you want to shorten it, you wanna cut it and delete a portion of it, very simple. With a clip selected, let's choose this one, you can grab the handles at the left and the right of the video, at which point you can shorten it, lengthen it, and you can do the same exact thing from the front as well. Like for example, say you wanted it to start right here as it's being stuck on the fridge, you could do that. Now I'll hit undo to go back. The other thing you can do rather than trim is cut a clip or in CapCut's terms, you can split a clip. So with this clip selected, we have our sub menu down here and I can hit split, which is gonna just cut that clip in half. And if I wanted to, I could delete one half, only keeping the part that I wanna keep in the edit. A couple of different ways to basically do the same exact thing. Now we'll move back with our undo buttons here. And for the most part, that is basic editing. You now know more than most people do when it comes to editing. So celebrate a little bit. So our intro stuff is kind of out of the way here and we can actually start editing our video. Now I know I haven't told it to you, but we're gonna be doing a motivational Instagram reel. These pop up on my feed all the time where it's basically just some kind of cool cinematic footage with emotional music in the background and usually a motivational quote as well. Now I have both of those that we need to import, the audio and the music. To do that, we're gonna come down to our add audio button right here, tap it, and now we have a series of options to choose from. I'm just gonna click on sounds. And now I've already downloaded the song that I wanna use. My favorite site on the internet for licensing songs is epidemicsound.com. They don't sponsor us, but if you do want a free seven day trial, we've got a link in the description. I downloaded that song on my computer. I airdropped it to the iPad. And now with it on my iPad, I can actually use it in the edit. So rather than select the TikTok icon right here, which has a bunch of free music already in the app, right? You can preview any of these and use them if you want. I'm actually gonna hit the folder icon right here and then I'm gonna choose from my device. Now I've already imported these two songs, so you see them in my library, but if you hadn't imported them already, you would just hit select from device, it will open up your library of files, and you can choose one. Now I've already done that, so we will first import the motivational music, and now that just added the song right to where our playhead was. I actually want it at the beginning of the clip, so I'll select it and bring it forward. And now we're gonna add the next layer of audio, which is our motivational quote. Now I'll go back to the main menu and you'll notice our add sound button that was down here before is now gone. That's totally fine. You can add a layer by hitting audio on the main menu, then tapping on sounds again and following the same exact process of hitting the folder, device, and now we have our motivational audio. That's our quote at plus. And then again, drag that up to the front. Now, just to give you an idea of where we're at, I can hit play and you can watch the video. Success requires sacrifice. Long hours, late nights, saying no to the things most people look forward to. But here's the thing, if you- So not bad so far, but our video clips are all too long. I wanna shorten these, make sure that our video is straight to the point, it follows the flow of the song, giving us a much better edit. Now there are tons of different styles of video edits out there, but for something like this, where the music is kind of the core driver of the edit, you're going to want to cut your videos on the beats of the song. All songs have these rhythmic patterns to them, and when we cut on those beats, our edit flows much better. Now, if you're aware of music and how this works, 
finding the beat and cutting your clip right there won't be hard, but CapCut also does this automatically for us. So with our music selected, we come down to the sub menu here and click on beats. Now we could add beats manually to the song by hitting this button, but we want CapCut to do the heavy lifting. So I'm gonna hit auto generate here and it's gonna take a minute analyze the song, and now it's added these little markers on our track for every single beat of the song, which is super helpful. When I click the check mark, you'll now notice back on the timeline, it's small, but those dots are there and it marks all the beats. Now I want each clip of this edit to last two beats. And this is extremely simple to do now. All I need to do is with a clip selected, grab it, and trim it down, and you can see right there, it kind of snapped right to that beat marker. CapCut knows it's what I wanna do. So what you saw me do right there was trim, but I could also hover over a beat, right? You can see it right there. I could select my clip, hit split, and then delete whatever I don't want, right? I'll just delete the end here, and we'll be good to go. You could obviously also trim from the front, get a rough idea of where you want it to be, and then really make sure you've snapped it and it's worth two beats. The key here is to trim the front or the back to keep only the best segment of your video. This is something that all top tier editors do. Now a little pro tip, if you noticed here, we have these two clips and it's kind of a cool sequence where it goes from day to night. Now this is called a match cut and it's called that because we have two scenes and we're perfectly matching the first clip to the second clip. It was filmed on a tripod. I just let it record in the morning and I kept working. And then I recorded a clip at night too to kind of give the idea of time passing. Very simple thing. I do match cuts all the time. You're seeing examples on screen right now. But to keep this section from being ultra repetitive, I'm just gonna go throughout the entire rest of the video and cut to the beat so we have our final sequence. All right, so we've got our sequence aligned. And just so you know, CapCut always adds its own little marketing plug at the end. You can just select that and delete it. And then also our song goes for a little longer than it needs to. We can edit our music just like we would our clips. With it selected, I can trim it all the way down to the end. And while we're here with the music selected, I do want you to know that there is an entire sub menu for audio as well. So if you wanted to adjust the volume, you could tap on volume here, increase it or decrease it. You could also add a fade to the beginning and the end of the audio. So it kind of fades in slowly and then fades out. There's a lot of menu items that you can really only master by exploring them yourself. Most of them, I will say, are pretty self-explanatory though. Now, moving on with our edit, we have our sequence all aligned up, and I'm not really gonna use transitions in this edit because I like a nice clean cut between my, my clips, but if you wanted to add a transition, you'll notice that there are these icons between every single clip. If you tap on that, it's gonna bring up a submenu with all of these different transitions. Now, yes, CapCut has a pro membership that does cost money, and you're gonna notice that they have all these effects labeled as pro. I am only using the free options today and I really don't think anyone needs to get a pro CapCut subscription. It's definitely worth $10 per month, but you don't need it and very rarely do I actually use the pro effects. But for example, if you wanted to use a transition, we could choose this free one right here for pull in. Sacrifice. And you'll notice right there, it just gave us a preview on our clip. If I scroll back, and play through Fires it, sacrifice. it did that little zoom in transition, which I, I don't think looks bad at all, but I'm gonna remove it for this. So I'll click it and then hit the circle with the cross in it and we're back to where we were. Transitions are cool, you can overdo it, so just you know, be careful. Okay, up next for this video, I wanna add auto captions that align with the audio from the quote. Now adding text, titles, all that stuff in CapCut is super easy. From the main menu, you are gonna come down here and select on text. Now we have a bunch of different ways that we could add text. The simplest way is to just hit the add text icon. That's gonna add a little graphic where you could type out what was being said. You could type out your title, you could type out your name, whatever you want. Uh, from there, you can change your style of the text. You know, you could choose one of the preset styles. You could change the color to whatever you want. You could hit on background and add a background like this. I'm sure you've seen this many times on the different social media platforms. Lots of very self-explanatory stuff in here when it comes to editing text. I don't want to manually add the text though. That would take me a while. So I'm just gonna delete that, 
come back to our main menu here and I'm gonna tap on auto captions. From here, it's gonna ask us to select our caption style. Again, they've got some cool pro ones, but we really just need the free one. So I'm gonna tap this style right here and then hit generate. And voila, we have our auto captions, really cool. They go throughout the entire video, did all this work for us, freaking love that. And just like the text that we were editing before, if I were to select this layer right here, we have a submenu where we can change things, right? We already picked a style, but if we wanted to change it, we could tap on style and we could choose this one right here, right? And that's gonna change all of our text layers. It didn't just change the one that I selected here, it's gonna change the style of all of them so that they look uniform. Now I'm gonna hit undo because I actually liked the style that we had before. If you wanted to, you could move your text and it will also move all the other ones. Pretty straightforward. You could use your fingers, pinch and resize, do whatever you want with them. Again, I'm gonna go back though. What's key for me here is I want to animate these a little bit more. And for a slow emotional video like this, there's already one I have in mind. But to get here, we are gonna come to our text layer, come down to animations in the sub menu. And now the one that I really like is this typing animation here. Before I select that though, I do want you to know that there are in animations, which animate how the text comes onto frame. There are out animations, which animate how the text leaves the frame. And then you have a loop, which just continues doing the same thing in a looping fashion to the text. And then you have caption specific animations, which really are, you know, just more animations. I'm gonna go back to our in animation here. And one more thing I need to tell you before I choose this, I want you to see this button right here, apply to auto captions. What that's asking is, do you wanna apply this animation to every single caption in the entire video, or do you uncheck this and only apply it to the one text file that you have selected? I actually do want to apply this to everything, so I'm gonna leave it checked, and finally we can select our animation. I'll hit check, and just give you an idea, we'll play through it real quick. Success requires sacrifice. Long hours, late nights, saying no to the things most people look forward to. But here's the thing, if you live like no one is- So that's super cool. Like really, if I wasn't explaining how to do all this stuff, we would have been done in like three minutes. So you can definitely do edits like this very fast in CapCut. And now we're officially ready to export. There are a lot of advanced concepts that we're gonna to touch on in the next edit, but from here, we've got something that I'm super proud of. You could double check and make sure, you know, all the spelling is correct, and if something wasn't correct, you could just double tap on the caption. That's gonna bring up the editor where you can actually change that text. Everything for me looks pretty good though, so I'm gonna come up here and hit the export button right here. That is just gonna take a second to process, and then we'll have a screen where we can save this video to our phone, post it to Instagram, TikTok, anything like that. And there you have it. I'll play this video so you can watch it from start to finish. Success requires sacrifice. Long hours, late nights, saying no to the things most people look forward to. But here's the thing. If you live like no one is willing to now, eventually you'll be able to live a life beyond what you ever dreamed possible. Remind yourself of that every time it gets hard. Hard is good, it's a side effect of growth. So embrace it when it hits you and remind yourself of where you're going. Hey, real quick, do you ever suffer from eye strain, computer headaches, or maybe it takes you forever to fall asleep at night? Now I'm not a doctor, but I am a human being with eyeballs that struggled with all of these things until I found the sponsor of today's video, Felix Grey and their incredible blue light blocking glasses. I've worn these glasses from Felix Grey every single day for the past year and my eyes still feel fresh even after a three hour long edit session. And if you're blind as a bat like I am, that's fine. They have prescription options for affordable prices and in tons of different styles. And to make things even better, use the code CREATOR20 to save an additional 20% at checkout. Your eyes will thank me. All right, basic edit done. It is time to move on to the advanced edit. This one is going to be a talking head video, similar to what you see the big influencers post online like Alex or Mosey and people like that. The specific style of talking head video that I'm gonna do is what I call a frequently asked question video. So in case you didn't know, inside our students community, I host a live weekly Q&A call where all of our students can ask me questions. And something that somebody asked me last week was which platform should I start posting on first? So I answered that question on the Q&A call, but I also took a screenshot, which is the inspiration for this talking head edit. So just like before, we're gonna start and hit new project. 
And the clip that we're gonna edit is this one right here. I filmed it on my iPhone and it's just me talking to the camera in my office. So we'll check the box right there and hit add. So just like before, we've got our timeline. This time it's only one clip though, and it's a much longer clip and you can see there's a lot of me just sitting and thinking and then I talk and then I take a break and I think about what the next line is and then I deliver the next line. If you're recording videos like this, do not worry about trying to get it to be a perfect take. All you need to do is pause, restart your line. You can always delete those gaps in the edit, which is what we're gonna do now. Before that though, there are two steps that I do with all talking head videos. The first one is any potential reframing that I might have to do. If you look at this clip, it's definitely not bad, but I think we can zoom in slightly. And also that artwork I have in the back is slightly tilted, which I always try to avoid. With this clip selected, all we need to do is go down to the sub menu and hit on basic right here. This is just a easier option to reframe your clip compared to trying to pinch in with your fingers. So first we have position scale and then rotation. I'm gonna start with scale. Just increase the scale a little bit. We'll go to like 107. From there, we will go to position and move, move over slightly just to get me more center frame and then we will go to rotation and just increase the rotation to one degree. That flattens things out and it looks so much better. So we reframe, the second step is we color correct or color grade. Now color correction and color grading is a very advanced process and it would take hours to explain exactly how to do every single step in process. That's something we teach in our full online course, but if you wanna get just a basic intro to color correction, you would come down to the filters tab right here, at which point you could select the pre-made filters that are included in the free option. For example, you could choose black and white, you could choose humble, which is a little bit more of like a moody look. There's a lot in here that you can explore and you can adjust the strength of that filter right here. I typically shy away from these and if anything, I will turn it off and then go to the adjust tab here. Now, if you've ever edited a photo or video before, you'll likely recognize these. We've got brightness, contrast, saturation, brilliance, sharpen, HSL for hue, saturation, and luminance. Lots of stuff in here. Each one of these has a slider where you can increase or decrease the selected parameter. If you're just getting started, I'd recommend focusing on brightness, contrast, saturation, and then your temperature. Very straightforward tools if you wanted to with a clip like this. I think the brightness is fine. I might go over to the highlights, just decrease the highlights a little bit, increase the contrast, get it to pop a little bit more. Sometimes I'll play around with the brilliance. I think I'm gonna leave it as is though. I don't think we need much else, but now we are good to go. And you'll notice that on the sub menu, we originally selected filters, but you can also hit adjust and it will bring you directly to that menu. And if you had multiple clips, you could apply the color grade that you've done to all of your clips by hitting apply to all right here. Needless to say, we've completed the first two steps. The next step is cutting up our clip, removing all of the mistakes, removing all of the dead space, the pauses, all that stuff. Now, interestingly enough, I always use CapCut on my phone and they have a feature called transcript-based editing, which for some reason, it is the only thing that I don't see on my iPad. And doing some research online, it sounds like this feature is, I don't know, new to the CapCut platform and it's just, it's glitching out and it's not showing up on everyone's devices. It's not unique to phones or unique to iPads. Just check your CapCut and see if you have this feature. And don't worry if you don't have it because I'll show you a work around in just a moment. But here we've switched to my phone and I'm just gonna import this clip very quickly and show you exactly how you would do it. With your clip selected, all you need to do is come down to transcript based editing. Now this is super cool. It's gonna transcribe your entire sequence. It allows you to select different portions of your text and just delete them. So here you can see, I say test, test, test. test. I'm checking the mic and then I sit down for 25.7 seconds. I can just select all of this, like a text document, and then hit delete, and it's literally deleted that portion from my timeline. So then I can keep going through. Did you start posting on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube? I get asked this question all the time. 
And then here I pause and I actually think about what the next line I'm gonna say is. Again, I can tap on that, delete it, and it's just deleted that pause from the script. Although so my keep going. favorite platform is long form content on YouTube, this actually isn't where I think most beginners should start. And you would basically just continue the process of finding areas of pause, deleting them by just tapping, Make sure you got the right section selected. You might have to modify it, hit delete. And if you have any lines like I do all the time where I repeat a line because I you know, originally said it wrong, all you'd need to do is basically highlight the text that you'd wanna remove, delete it, and it's gonna delete it from your script. Now what's really cool about that is once you're done, you can zoom out and you'll see that it's literally cut up your timeline for you, which is super helpful. It does save you a little bit of time. Now, if you're experiencing the glitch that my iPad is and you don't see this setting, there is a workaround. Just come down to text. We're gonna create our auto captions. I'll just use this style right now. And now with our auto captions generated, it gives us a very easy view of what's actually the video and what's not in the video. So all I would really need to do here is zoom in on the timeline, go to the end of my text, select the clip, create a split point, go to where the text starts again, because we know that's where the actual talking starts, create a split point, and then you could delete what is not usable anymore. You would repeat that process over and over and over again throughout the entire script, and you will likely have to come back and do just a little bit of fine tuning, like this clip or that clip, you could just trim the back half a little bit more and just really tighten up those cuts, removing the breath marks, Overall, it's probably gonna take you 10 to 20% longer. Hopefully you don't even have to deal with this. You can just use that transcript-based editor that I have on my phone. All right, so we've got our timeline cut up here. We've removed all of the mistakes in the dead space. Up next, something I always do and most people on the internet do with talking head videos is every other clip they actually increase the scale on to have this punch in and punch out effect. It just kind of makes it look like you're filming on multiple different cameras. It helps with the pacing and the flow of the video. So in CapCut, super easy to do. You can actually just come in and pinch with your fingers on every other clip. That way you're going in and out. The other option is obviously you could go to that basic tab that we used earlier and increase the scale. But this should do the trick just fine. You can see scrolling through the timeline, we've got our punch in and punch out nicely done. Okay, now up next, what I like to do is add any B-roll that I know I'm gonna want in my edit. Now we didn't talk about this in the last edit because we had all the clips we needed, we didn't add anything else. But if you ever wanna add clips, there's a couple different ways to do it. If you wanna add it to the main timeline here, you'll notice at the far right, we have this plus icon over here. You could tap on that it will load up the you know, selector and you can choose anything you want. But I don't wanna add it to the main timeline here, I wanna add it on top of the timeline or at least in the CapCut interface, they show it to you beneath it. This way the video clips will play as B-roll to give more emphasis to whatever I'm talking about in the main A-roll here. So for example, if we play through this part of the video, fuck our Instagram, make videos that are like 10 to 30 seconds long, build up the skill sets, have a ton of fun doing it, and then eventually graduate to YouTube. So where we say, you know, you can make videos that are 10 to 20 seconds, build up the skill set, have a ton of fun. I wanna use clips as B-roll showing, you know, me actually making those videos. So here is the spot that I've paused it. I know this is where I wanna add our overlay. So I'll go out of this text menu here, which will hide our captions. And if you ever wanna bring those back, you just hit the text layer and they'll come back. But instead here, we wanna add an overlay, which is CapCut's button for adding B-roll. So we will select that and then click add overlay. And now I can actually use some of the footage that I used in our previous edit. So I'm gonna select this clip right here. It's actually me getting ready to shoot a video. I'll hit add. And now we've added this to the timeline and you can see it doesn't fully take up the correct amount of space. So I'll zoom that in slightly. And now I'll play through this just so you can get an idea of how as soon as this clip comes up, because it is underneath our main timeline, whatever is on the lowest level in CapCut Mobile is what's gonna show through on the top figuratively of our edit. That's why this clip is showing, so we can play through it here. Form like Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, make videos that are like 10 to 30 seconds long, build up the skill sets, have a ton of fun. Pretty cool, so we've got our B-roll clip right there. Now we can add another one. Uh, I will just come back to overlay on the main menu, select that, and now we can add this one right here. That looks good. We can hold our finger on this, drag it over, 
And then we can add one more overlay just to round out the section. So like this one of me getting the light ready, scale that guy up a little bit. And then I actually want this one to play first. So we'll just rearrange this whole section, just holding our finger on these and resequencing. And then edit should be last. So there we go. Just trying to get these in a way that makes sense to the viewer watching. Our Instagram make videos that are like 10 to 30 seconds long. We're gonna trim this right here. Move this guy forward. Zoom in a little bit for you. 30 seconds long. Build up the skill sets, have a ton of fun doing it. And eventually graduate this guy needs to get scaled up a little bit there you go tube over time now which of the three short cool and then as this clip ends right here i'm just going to trim this one back so it caps off the section now we could add more and more b-roll it would just kind of get repetitive for you to watch that i think covers you know how to add b-roll and align it in your sequence now the next thing i want to do is add photos and stickers to give a little bit more visual presence to the edit so we'll go all the way back to the beginning here and like I said earlier, I actually took a picture of the question that a person asked me and I wanna add it to the edit. You probably see people on social media doing this all the time. All we need to do from our main menu is tap on overlay again. We can hit add overlay. Instead of video, I'm gonna to go to photo and then select this photo right here, check it and add it in. Now, pretty cool, we'll bring this down just to get it in good framing. And I believe that is already right up at the front, which is good. We'll extend it so it goes the entire first clip. And what we will also do is animate the way that it comes into frame. Rather than just have it you know, exist at the beginning, we want to attract the viewer's eye to it and animate it. So with it selected on the sub menu, we will tap on animations. And now we have a bunch of different options. Some are you know, restricted to pro as always, but uh, a lot of them are free and we will you know, you could do a basic fade like that one, but we've got some more. Should you? That one's kind of cool. Should you? Not bad, I'm gonna go with this one, swing right, and just so you're aware, anytime you add a transition and animation, you have this slider where you should can you change the duration. You can make it should super you, fast or super long. On I'm gonna go right in the middle around 1.5. Pretty cool. Okay, so I like that. And just so you're aware, this is an in animation. Just like before, I could do an out animation or a combo animation. I just want the in for now though, so we'll click check and we're good to go. Should you start posting on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube? I get asked this question all the time. Although my favorite platform is pretty cool. Now the next thing that we'll do is add a keyframe scale. Now this is again, a slightly more complex thing, but so many editors do this and CapCut makes it really easy. So this involves keyframes. Keyframes are a fundamental aspect of editing videos, so I would get comfortable with them now because you're definitely gonna learn more about them over time. Think of a keyframe like anchoring a setting at a specific point in time. This allows you to change it by anchoring it at a new point in time. With this clip selected, playheads right here at the beginning, I can come up right here to our add keyframe button. I'm gonna hit that and it added a keyframe. That little diamond is on our clip right now. If I scroll forward, add another keyframe, and then I increase the scale, okay? Now what's happening is when we scroll between those, you can see the scale changing. See how it's zooming in and out right there? That is simply because I added those two keyframes. Now there's actually a little space here at the end, so I'm actually just gonna delete this keyframe by hitting minus. We're gonna scroll to the very end of this clip and just do that process over again by adding a new keyframe and then zooming in on our clip. And now if we play through this, you will see the effect in action. Should you start posting on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube? I get asked this question all the time. Pretty cool. So you can see it just zooms in there. It's kind of like pulling the viewer into the shot. So keyframes, you now know, pretty advanced topic, so that's great. Moving on, we've got our next section here, which is going to be probably the most advanced edit of the entire tutorial, and that is a rotoscope where we remove the background. Now there are a couple steps involved in the process, and it will all make sense at the end. It'll come full circle, so bear with me here. You can just copy the steps exactly, and you'll be good to go. So this is the clip that we want to remove the background on. I'm just gonna zoom it out a little bit, just cause we can use that little extra space. 
Now, step number one is to duplicate this clip. We're gonna need multiple layers of it, so we're gonna need to duplicate it first. With it selected, we are going to come down to the submenu and hit duplicate. So now, if we zoom out on the timeline, just so you're aware of how all this is working, this clip and this clip are the same exact clip, right? They are one and the same, I just duplicated them. Now, what we need to do is add an overlay here for our background. So we're removing the background of a clip. We need to add a new background in. All we need to do, as always, is come back to our main menu, hit overlay, add overlay. And now in videos, I have this background right here. I downloaded it from contentcreatortemplates.com, which is my favorite place to download pretty much all video editing templates. But of course, if you, you, know, if you dig around, you can find stuff like this for free on the internet but this is the one I'm gonna use, I'll hit add. And there we go, it is now on our timeline. I'm going to just use my fingers, crop it up, get it to full frame status, and we'll make sure that it is just trimmed right to the beginning of that clip. Yeah, there we go, that looks good. All right, so here we are. Our background is just covering our clip. It probably doesn't make sense, but it will in just a moment. Now, just to make things simple here, I want to make sure that this kinetic dots background is on the immediate next level. Because we have all this B-roll here, it is just trapped on the third level. So we're gonna trim this guy down, get it to the point where we can basically bring it back up a level. See what I did there? I just trimmed it so we have enough space to fit with these guys. And you know what, we'll just trim it all the way down to the same length as this clip right now. That way it lasts for exactly the right amount of length for this section of the video. Now we've got the kinetic dots where we need it to be. Now we need to take this clip, which again we made a duplicate of, and we need to graduate it to be above the kinetic dots background. So I will come with that clip selected down here to the submenu and hit overlay. What that did is it just pumped it up and now we have this clip, which we're seeing, the kinetic dots is behind it, and then we have another duplicate behind it. That's kind of keeping our placeholder on the main timeline here. If we didn't have that duplicate, the next clip in the video would have smushed over to the left and just kind of combobulated up the entire timeline, which is not what we want. Now with this clip selected, all we need to do is come down to the sub menu and hit remove background. We'll select auto removal and boom, this should all be coming full circle now. We'll hit check and hopefully these layers are making crystal clear sense right now. We have our top clip showing through. We have our kinetic dots, which is now behind that. And then finally we have our third level, which is just keeping the spacing of our main timeline proper. Everything looks super cool. I can take this guy right here, pinch him down with my fingers and put him in the corner. And now we have all this space up top where we can add graphics and other stuff to keep the viewer engaged and add more detail. The only issue, the last step here, is we technically have two of the same layers with two of the same audio layers as well. Both of these clips have audio, so it will be twice as loud. Super easy, we'll just select our little overlay here, come to volume, and bring the volume all the way down. Now if we play through this, you'll see it's starting to look pretty cool. I get asked this question all the time. Although my favorite platform is long form content on YouTube. Okay, so Rotoscope, we can check. That is a super cool and powerful tool to use. Up next, we're gonna start adding stickers and animating them. This is gonna add more context to our video. And by the way, I just went back to the main menu and you'll notice that our timeline has gotten compressed like crazy. That's just CapCut trying to save space. If you ever wanna get back to the text layers, you will tap on text and you'll notice the captions are back. We can go back to the main menu and now they're gone. If you wanna get back to the overlay layer, you will click on overlay and you will see all of those. So it's easy sometimes to get lost. All you need to do is remember, what am I trying to edit? Tap on that on the main menu and it'll bring up the relevant timeline. Now at this point in the video, I'm talking about how my favorite platform to create content on is YouTube but it's not what I recommend most people to start with. So we want a sticker that represents YouTube. So I'm gonna come down to our main menu, hit on stickers, and I'm just gonna save myself the time and type YouTube. CapCut usually has a decent selection. This one is pretty cool. We'll add that to our video, and I'll just resize it up here at the top with my fingers. Okay, cool. Now the next one we wanna add is an X because I'm saying this isn't where I think people should start. So we'll hit cross up on the search and grab this nice little animated one right here. Kind of reframe that there, hit cancel, check. And now you can see we have two layers on the timeline for our graphics. We have 
our YouTube graphic right here up top, and then we have our X graphic right there. And if we play through it, up next, we need to make sure that these are timed up as they should be. Although my favorite platform is long form content on YouTube. This so YouTube came in at the right time, but I need to move the X back because it really shouldn't be coming in yet. Actually isn't where I think most beginners should start. Cool. So that looks good. We'll just extend these so they last for the whole clip and we're good to go. Although my favorite platform is long form content on YouTube, this actually isn't where I think most beginners should start. Awesome, that looks good. I'll move this up just a hair. And the next thing that I wanna do is animate these. So rather than have the YouTube just pop in uh, and not look professional at all, we will select it, hit animations, and I'm gonna choose slide down. It's giving you a little idea of what it will look like. And as always, we can do the in animation, the out animation, or do a loop. I'm just gonna do a slide right here increase the length of it a little bit and hit check. Not bad. Now the X already has a pre built in animation. So we'll just leave that as is. And now the script says creating long form video takes a long time. So I'm going to do a cool little animation where I replace the X with a clock. So we'll shorten this guy down to right here. We will go back to our main menu and add a new sticker right here for a clock. I like this one right here. So we'll add that, get it right where the X was as well. And we will just cancel out of the search, hit check. And now rather than just have it cut from X to clock, I want an animation that makes this entire process look seamless. So we're gonna tap on our X layer right here, animate. And now we actually aren't animating the in, we're animating the out, right? Cause this is the end of the X. So we'll hit slide right and it slides right off the screen, which is perfect. We'll hit check. And now we will come to our clock animate. We wanna animate the in, which is what we're already on. And again, we wanna slide right. So now if we look at this, they kind of push one another off screen, which is cool. Long form video takes a long time and there's a lot of- Not bad. And if I wanted to, I could also upgrade this to a new layer. by just clicking and dragging it down. And then I can hold it, bring it back just a little bit so they overlap, extend this guy right here. And now they will have more of a tighter transition. Start. Creating a long form video takes a long time and there's a lot of skill associated with doing that. So cool, not bad at all. You're definitely becoming an expert one little tip at a time here, but we're gonna keep on moving. We're almost done, but I wanna add some more stickers here. Like Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, so we say Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram. And again, I want to add some stickers here. So we're gonna go back to sticker. We're gonna search because we said Facebook. So we'll add that guy. Then we'll just keep searching here while we've got it up to TikTok. Add the TikTok logo. And then we will add Instagram as well. That one looks good. So now we'll cancel out of this right here just so we can get the screen back. And Facebook comes first, so we'll get this guy over here. Then TikTok was second, so we'll get this guy right here. And then Instagram was third. And I'm gonna use my finger and just change the orientation and size of these a little bit. Not bad, pretty cool. And when it actually plays through, the, the auto caption will be up top. The last steps here will just be to time up these graphics to make sure they pop in when I say them in the script and then we'll animate them as well. So Facebook starts right here, TikTok starts right here, and Instagram starts right here. Like Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, make videos. Not bad, and then we're just gonna do an animation for each of them. So we'll tap on each layer, animate. I'm gonna do in, bounce, and then I'm gonna do out, bounce. That way it bounces in and then bounces out at the same time. We'll do the repeat of that for TikTok. So bounce in, out, and then bounce out as well. Same thing, we're gonna add our in and out for Instagram. So bounce in, out, bounce out, and then we'll hit check. So we'll play through that. Now you can see how all the animations kind of impacted that. Form platform like Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram make videos that are like 10 to 30. Pretty cool, but we've got our B-roll showing up in just a second. So I'm gonna scroll to where the B-roll starts and make sure all the graphics are trimmed just so they are off screen before the B-roll. Looks pretty good, although it's a little busy around the 
text. So I'm just gonna spread these guys out a little bit. That looks better. Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, make videos that are like 10 to 30 seconds long, build up the skill sets, have a ton of fun doing it, and then eventually graduate to YouTube over time. And realistically, I would just continue that process over and over and over again. I would add stickers, animate them, I would rotoscope some more backgrounds, I would add some more keyframe zooms, maybe add some text and titles here and there, but the process gets repetitive, so rather than just you know extending this video and making it longer, you can rewind, pause, and get a refresher on any of the sections that we taught here. I know this was a longer video, but I truly hope you found it valuable. I personally remember when I was learning this stuff, I felt I could only learn by watching over the shoulder, somebody doing it step by step and explaining every step of that process. So that's what I tried to give you today. If you liked this, like I said earlier, it is a small taste of what we teach inside our full course, 14 Day Filmmaker, which is only $48 and 120,000 people have gone through it and loved it. So if you want to enroll, click the link in the description of this video. Other than that, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Quick public service announcement, just in case you didn't know, CapCut is also an incredible desktop editing program that works on Macs, PCs, laptops, desktops, all computers. And we have a super in-depth tutorial covering the entire editing process on a desktop as well on the YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description. Don't forget to check it out.